As we approach summer, we can be seeing a lot more ticks. Some may even be carrying a bacteria not normally seen on the West Coast. A director with the Bay Area Lyme Foundation weighed in on this. Ticks are being found at latitudes and at altitudes that they weren't previously recorded at. We found yeah. ticks and infected ticks uh, at our beaches here in California, which um, nobody expects to find it, infected ticks out at the coast. And with ticks comes Lyme disease. Join me now, Stanford Clinical Professor of Medicine, Dr. Malthi Srinivasan. Well, starting off, what exactly is Lyme disease and what exactly are the symptoms? Uh, nice to see you, Ryan. Uh, so Lyme disease is a bacteria. It's caused by a bacteria, Borrelia burgdorferi, that you can get from deer ticks. Now, the active infection has three stages. First, within a couple of weeks, about 70% of people get a bullseye rash and headache and flu-like symptoms. And if untreated, in a couple months, people can develop nerve palsies, brain infections, heart infections, and arrhythmias. And then finally, months to years later, you can have significant joint swelling from the bacteria. So um, active Lyme infection is very different than um, what people call you know, chronic Lyme disease or post-Lyme syndrome, which actually is not an infection, but it's a syndrome like long COVID or chronic fatigue syndrome. So if you have any of those symptoms, please go see your doctor immediately. So, the, so there is a difference between Lyme disease and chronic Lyme disease. Yeah, um, so chronic Lyme disease is actually not an infection. Um, uh, so again, there's a three phases of uh, active infection. And then there's the complications that you can get, like uh, complications from COVID with long COVID syndrome. So they're very different things. And the uh, for, for post-Lyme syndrome, you do symptomatic treatment the same way we do for long COVID syndrome. And what's some of the other most common tick-borne diseases and the symptoms that we should be looking out for? Yeah, you know, ticks can carry uh, dozens and dozens of uh, infections, and m the majority of them present with a rash, fever, headache, and muscle aches and joint aches. Uh, the ones in California that we need to watch out for now, in addition to Lyme, are Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, which after you get the flu-like syndrome, um, you can get a spotted rash over your body, starting from your hands really to your chest, and it can cause brain infection and kidney failure. Um, anaplasmosis, which is spotless Rocky Mountain spotted fever, and it can cause very low blood counts. And then the third is babesiosis, uh, which can cause, in addition to all of those other symptoms, diarrhea and respiratory symptoms. And it can be fatal in people who are immunocompromised. So if you've been outdoors and you develop a fever, rash, and headache uh, with muscle aches and joint aches, please go see your doctor immediately. And what steps should we take if we're bitten by a tick, or how do we avoid them altogether? Maybe that's the better question. Right, so the first thing is don't panic. If you um, uh, get bitten by a tick, Lyme disease, the attached tick has to be uh, fill, fill its belly before regurgitating the contents into you, which takes a couple days. So if you find a tick, uh, take some fine tip tweezers and directly pull the tick up from the base or go to your doctor to have it removed. Don't use alcohol or fire or Vaseline, which people have done in the past, because that can cause a tick to regurgitate uh, its contents into your stomach, uh, from, from its stomach into your skin. And if you're going to a tick habitat, then take tick precautions. And this is things like, uh, you know, avoiding uh, uh, foliage, staying in the middle of a trailhead, uh, wearing clothing that completely covers your skin, and using tick repellent like DEET and coating your clothes with permethrin. And when you come back, shower within two hours and do a full body check. And don't forget to throw your clothes into the dryer for about 15 to 20 minutes to get rid of any unwanted travelers that you have brought home with you. And, and doctor, there's so much being said about if you do get Lyme disease, should you be seeing a specialist? I, I've talked to so many people who have had Lyme disease and they said it, it's just a, a, such a disease that's tough to diagnose. Well, the diagnosis itself of Lyme disease is fairly straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, there are blood tests that you can do that can indicate whether you've had a past infection. And if you have the classic symptoms of the initial rash, you actually don't need any additional testing. You can just get a medication called doxycycline. So the active infection is uh, in all of the phases is pretty straightforward to treat. It's just doxycycline for a couple of weeks. Um, but if you have, uh, um, if you develop chronic um, of the post Lyme syndrome, then you do need symptomatic treatment and you don't need to see an infectious disease doctor. The majority of times your primary care doctor can help you with that. Um, and we can do the types of supportive things that we would do for long COVID. Well, always good information and great speaking to you. So Dr. Srinivansan, thank you very much.
Thanks so much, Ryan.